Richardson. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Um, uh, I'm an actor primarily. Um, I have a show out right now called Reacher on Prime Video. Um, but, uh, you know, I've been in the business for uh, about 17 years, direct, write, produce, all that. So um, I'm here to talk about, I guess, uh, the arts, film and TV, maybe, and answer any questions you have. Absolutely. Do you mind if we just jump straight into some of the student questions? I'm happy to. Absolutely. One of the kids in France wanted to know, what was your favorite subject growing up in school? Oh, good question. Uh, lunch. Does lunch count as a subject? Um, I loved eating and I loved recess. Um, you know, my, uh, one of my favorites was always uh, science. Um, I was always really into uh, like anatomy and physiology, biology. Um, you know, I still to this day, I do a lot of, re you know, I read research papers for the fun of it, you know, of scientific studies. Like I just like, I like studying that kind of stuff for some reason and it clicks with my brain. Both my brothers are engineers. So they're, you know, they're scientists in their own right. And, uh, and uh, you know, I think if, you know, if I didn't do what I do, I'd probably be, you know, in some kind of field uh, in, in, in this the science realm. Um, so uh, yeah, that's, that was probably my thing. Definitely not a math guy. Math, math and numbers, numbers and I don't, don't mix. That's great. Uh, we have a question from Matteo, who's in Italy, and he's uh, interested in becoming an actor. So Matteo, you should be able to unmute. You had a pretty good question. Hi, Alan. Uh, I'm uh, really honored to talk with you. And uh, I, I would like to become an actor. Uh, both, uh, I, I'm from Italy, so both here in Italy and there in, in the United States. I'm starting to you know, do some uh, acting classes uh, and uh, appearances in uh, some uh, movies, video clips. And I would oh, like to if you, give me, if you can give me some advice you know, for my career. Yeah, um, well, congratulations. Um, I, wish, I wish you all the best. Um, it sounds like you're, you're on the right path so far. And uh, you know, the, the curiosity, the openness that you have to even ask what can be done to improve is a great start. Um, you know, but these days it's, um, it's, it's different than when I got started. Uh, you know, I was, sort of, uh, I, I was sort of standing on the precipice of pre-technology era. <laughs> you know, I mean, we had phones and, and the internet was a thing, but nobody really used it the way that we do now. And it was hardly as mobile as it is now. Um, so your breaking in was really about putting yourself in close proximity to people that gave you those opportunities and then, you know, tr trying to take advantage of as many of those as possible. These days, it seems that um, there really is no epicenter for Hollywood or, you know, for, 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 you know, whatever aspect of the industry you're trying to break into. It's wherever you are and uh, you can tell your stories, you can demonstrate your voice as an artist from wherever you are with a, with a cell phone, you know? Um, so I, you know, I tell people all the time, uh, you know, practice your voice, uh, you know, even if it's just you by yourself or with your friends, practice telling stories, practice, uh, you know, practice doing things that you don't maybe see yourself doing, but, um, but because it helps give you such a, a big macro perspective of the whole process, direct, right, produce little shorts or skits for yourself or, or dramatic scenes or whatever your voice is, develop that and find it and, uh, and continue to put that out, even if it's just for friends. Um, because I, I'm confident that if you have the kind of gift and talent and, and voice that uh, adds value to the industry, it will eventually rise uh, to, you know, to find the eyes that will help, you know, catapult you to the next level with the next rung of the ladder. Um, so I would say just keep, keep working your craft on your own, you know, developing and, and we have the technology to do that these days. So um, I think it can only help. Yeah. That's wonderful. Wonderful advice. Um, one of the kids in Spain <clears throat> wanted to know what was it like playing uh, super, you played multiple superheroes with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Aquaman. Like yeah. what's, what's that like? Um, yeah, it can be a little confusing. I'm not sure which, uh, which, uh, which superhero I'm playing today sometimes on a set, but um, no, it's been, it's been fun. I, you know, I, I was asked recently to, you know, I was, uh, I was asked by Jeff Johns who, who runs DC comics to play Hawk. And I was confused cause I was like, didn't I play a DC? I was already Aquaman. So is that allowed? Am I breaking rules? <laughs> um, but it's look, I'm, 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 I'm honored to be a part of that community. I'm flattered that people would ask, um, It'd be cool to play a super a superhero with like some legitimate superpowers at some point. I got to talk to fish. That's one. Hawk doesn't have any. Ninja Turtles can fight, but they're like green and, you know, they're green and, and oozy. Like it doesn't, it's not the same. Um, one of these times, like we got to get somebody that flies or something. 
That's great. Uh, we have a student question from Mev, and she is in, uh, I think, Northern Italy. Mev, you should be able to ask. Yes, sure. I would like to know how do you prepare to play a character in a film and what are the steps you take to approach a new lifestyle for movies? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so it took me a while to understand what the craft was to me, like what that means. What is the art of performance, of storytelling? And what is my role in that? Um, it took me a long time to figure that out. And I actually took a really big loss at an audition one time. Um, I got some feedback from the casting directors. Uh, it was for Thor. Um, and they said, you know, if you just had the craft, if you had the art of acting, you know, you, this part was yours. It was yours to lose. And you just didn't have it. And it really put me on my heels. And I took a break from the business for a little bit. And I dove into... Um, some, I, I dove into some work with some really, um, you know, illustrious teachers in the field and started studying theater and, and, and reading books and really putting myself through that kind of masterclass phase to understand what that even meant. You know, um, uh, I understand what it is to me now. I think everybody's process is a little different, but, um, it begins with fully understanding the scope of the material that we have to pull from, whether that's a script, a scene, a book a series of books, a comic book, whatever it is, whatever that, uh, that, that, that author's intent is, uh, you know, wherever you can find that, absorbing all of it, not just what is on the page there, but what it means to that character. You know, it, it, are we studying a, a period piece that takes place in like uh, the Upper East Side in 1965? What does that period um, represent for us uh, politically, spiritually, theologically? Um, you know, on an emotional, socioeconomic level for that character. We really have to understand all that's going on. So, you know, it, we absorb that material and then start to absorb the canon around that material. You know, the history, like we, we, we should be every man, you know, we should know a little something about everything when we approach these characters so that we can really understand where, where they fit in this slice of history. I mean, imagine if, if we're approaching a character that's um, just post-World War II era in the United States. You know, there's something on the zeitgeist there in the psychology of that person that we may not fully understand unless we really, unless we really know the history of where they just came from, right? I mean, uh, you know, so whatever it is, we should be drinking in as much information as possible. Um, once that happens, then we start to digest what's on the page. Do we understand the scenes? Can we break down the lines? Can we approach from a technical standpoint um, uh, the scene work and, and start to understand the arcs, the ebbs and flows, the highs and lows of the character? You know, um, you know, from a writing standpoint, plotting out the journey that that the script as a whole, aside from the character, is taking. Right where you know, usually most of our stories these days end on a high note. That means the midpoint is always going to be this treacherous low where we feel like we've lost everything and then our hero has to climb out of this hole until they finally succeed and triumph over whatever it is, right? We need to know what that looks like, um, you know, for the script as a whole, for our character as well. Um, so, so, you know, we're, we're, we're breaking down the script, we're breaking down the scene, we're breaking down the, the history, the information that we have around this body of work, with the breaking down the material itself. Once we do all that, we can get to the fun part, which for me is bringing the imagination into it. Can I imagine all of the scenarios that this character is going to be experiencing? Can I imagine the before a scene happens, the after a scene happens, the stuff that isn't on the, 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 the page, but that, that tells the story that we need to tell? Like, what is that character's journey? Can we process all of this information through our head and just enjoy playing in there and seeing what comes to life? When that happens, then we can start to really you know, bring the work out for other people to, to a set to, in front of other actors or directors. And if we've done that kind of work, by the time we arrive at the place where other people are getting to enjoy what we've enjoyed, then it's just about letting go of all the work and playing. Can I listen now? Can I listen and know and trust? I will respond instinct, instinctively the way that this character would have, because now I understand and I've played in my, in my imagination the way that this character would have experienced things. Like, can I just listen and play? 
Um, so that's a bit of the journey that I've taken, like a very, you know, if I had to give you the, the, the quick spiel. Um, so a lot of that work happens quietly on your own time and, uh, and, and it's invisible, hopefully by the time that you show up to set, you know, and, and it just, uh, you know, hopefully people think you just make great killer, you have killer instincts, you know, and they don't even know what you've done, but, um, but, uh, yeah, it's the craft first and then imagination second, I would say. That is, uh, yeah, that is an incredible answer. <laughs> and so I know uh, we're kind of strapped for time here before we let you go. It, as these kids kind of go off in the world and figure out what they want to become, whether it's going into acting or music or whatever it may be, um, is there any advice that you can give to these kids as they figure out what they want to do? Oh, you know, I, I've, you know, I've got three young boys myself. They're nine, eight, and six. Um, you know, I'm a father. Um, I've, you know, I've, I've I've been in the business a long time. I've had a lot of life experience. I mean, I could talk all day about the things that I wish I could impart on, you know, my kids. So I, I could, I wish I could share with you. Uh, there's never enough time, uh, you know, to talk about the lessons that I think a lot of us learn. But um, I, I would say one of the biggest ones is just um, as an artist myself, somebody who uh, desperately wishes to tell stories and bring joy or bring a conversation to life that I feel like we should be having as a society, whatever the purpose for the art is, I care deeply about that. I'm very sensitive and I want, um, I want to approach uh, the world of storytelling in that kind of, uh, you know, in that kind of way. But there's a reverence that I have for what I do, for what we do as artists. That said, we can never lose sight of what's really most important in life. Um, if we're to if we're to to, to to really find success and and that's really the the definition of success I think is I think we've been lied to a little bit you know um, we are told in this day and age that success is about accumulation about uh, material amassing material goods right if I make a lot of money then I'm successful if I'm able to do professionally what I love then I'm successful. Um, I think success comes from simply sharing your gifts with the world, whatever that is, and expecting nothing in return. Yes, I mean, on some level, we have to have a career that sustains us, whatever that is. And that may or may not today align with your goals as an artist. But can we, can we find the thing that sparks a, a true joy in us and give it away to people with, with, uh, with expecting nothing in return, if we can find that place where we're willing to serve the world with the best of who we are for free, um, then I think we are well on our way to uh, a life that's, that's fulfilling and that's, uh, that's, that, that can be full of joy regardless of our circumstances, right? I mean, I think joy transcends circumstances. Happiness is something we're told to pursue, but that's, that's circumstantial. I mean, that's that, you know, our happiness depends on what's happening, you know, in our world at any one moment. So I would say pursue a different kind of success where you find joy in serving others. And I think you'll never be let down um, in using your gifts.